Hi guys, welcome back to Planet Coaster here on Geekism. My name is John T and today we're continuing our build series. Uh, you'll see that the video says that we're doing a general store. Uh, we're actually going to be doing that a little bit later. First of all, we're just going to finish off the, um, the rapids ride that we built in the last episode. Uh, before I dive into what's actually happening here, I just want to say a huge thank you and welcome to all of our new subscribers. The channel has um, well, not really blown up, you know, I'm not making a living out of it yet, but <laughs> uh, but it's got so big uh, compared to what it was before we started making Planet Coaster content, and I think that's one or two uh, or three reasons. One, it's obviously a fantastic game, loads of people are looking out for some really great stuff out there, uh, which I'm hoping I'm able to help with a little bit, uh, but also I'm just having an absolute ball in this game, and, I, and I'm hoping that my love for it uh, is coming across in the videos, and I, I hope that's uh, one of the reasons why you guys have, uh, have joined me. So. In Welcome, and uh, it's really great to have you here, and I hope you're enjoying the stuff that we're making. Uh, please, any suggestions uh, of stuff you'd like to see, please drop it down in the comments. I really love talking to you guys uh, down in the comments there. Uh, so yeah, and there all that slushy stuff's out of the way, let's crack on with this. So we're uh, we're doing the, um, the scenery for the queue building. Uh, we actually do a separate building for the actual entrance of the ride, and then we do this building here. It's relatively simple, and to be honest with you, I've took my... Uh, took my sort of design here from rapid rides that I've been on they they are usually relatively simple queue areas they they're kind of just sort of boxed in with a little light theming but for the most part uh, they don't really have that much going on with them uh, so that's what we've gone for here we've we've kept sort of the uh, uh, the logging style and here in this corner here I was struggling to get the building around there so I thought instead we because we're right next to that mine area there we could have it so it looks like the mine sort of caved in on this area of the uh, uh, of the queue so we do some uh, some tool mining tools and uh, and some dynamite and things like that and then a little bit of scaffolding here as so it looks like we are attempting to support the wall there from from where the uh, the cave, where it's caved in a little and it's just a little light theming, I think it works quite well. Um, we add this sort of fence panel here. Now one thing I've realised I've done here is, I add the fences in, uh, and then later on I add some beams in, and then later on I add some lights in, and it would have been much easier to do uh, to do all of them together once and then just duplicated the whole thing, but uh, sometimes I, I'm not able to plan that far ahead in my head. <laughs> uh, it suits me just to uh, to make it bit by bit and see how it's going and then see what we need next. But I am repeating some of the stuff here so we haven't got to make the whole thing over and over again. And uh, and you'll see there we just sort of box in the stairs there. I struggled to think of a way of theming the underneath area of the, uh, the queue there that the rapid comes around. I obviously wanted something in there but was struggling to think of something that would fit nice and neatly that would still sort of sit within the logging theme. One thing I realised, uh, and I mentioned it even in the last video here, that although I called it the logging building, you know, the Ripsaw Logging Company, there wasn't that much to do with logging there so I've gone back and added in some extra logs and uh, saw blades and things like that to sort of increase the theming of that sort of uh, style and that idea. And uh, so one of the things I do there is make a sort of uh, cut down forest, a forest that's already been logged and you'll see me do that in a little while. So here I am adding the beams in and this is just to get some lighting throughout. Uh, lighting is one thing I haven't really thought about much in this park so far uh, because I usually have the daytime set, you know, the lighting set. Uh, but I do think lighting is really important, especially when you want to get some really cool screenshots and things like that. Uh, lighting is important, so we do go back and add some nice oil lamps to uh, to the final area. Uh, we also had some signage here. I had a little trouble with the signage, to be honest. This one here, this blue one, uh, I love the shape and size of it, but the colours only change the middle of it and they don't change the blue uh, border. It's always blue and it, although it's quite a nice colour and we use it later on, it didn't actually fit very nicely uh, with this ride. So instead we use this one here, Ripsaw, and then we add another one underneath. Um, uh, that says, no, oh, no, we change it out again. I was going to say, it didn't look like the one I've got, I remember. <laughs> there we go, lip, rip saw, and then another one underneath that says logging company. And uh, we change the colour of that one to be a little bit darker. Love the western signs, I actually think they're the best signs in the game. Uh, I would really love to see uh, some more signs for the other themes, but still within with the uh, the editable capabilities of these ones, you know, you can you can write really nicely in these and change the colours of them. Some some more piratey ones or some more sci-fi ones would uh, would go down really well. Uh, so here we go. Then yeah, we add on this uh, this sort of barren 
uh, forest area really and it's as if they've cut these down to build the queue over the top of them is kind of the idea with it and I've just used these logs here pointing up it kind of looks like uh, like chopped off trees uh, I try and place a log there but decide against it but I actually go back in later on and, and add some of those uh, logs piled up to the left there and here we just had some scenery uh, some some foliage if in doubt stick a tree there that's uh, that's always my motto so we stick those in and I think we had some water coming out as well uh, from the top it takes me a little while to decide what sort of water I want uh, that quite doesn't look right does it I ended up putting one of the uh, one of the thicker designs there um, the idea was originally for it to, to go over the top of the people but I think we've got enough of those in the in there so far so I wanted one that was just a bit more rare uh, uh, oh, that was right. This is what I was trying to do: was make a, a, a four of them on an axis, sort of turning out from each other, and just couldn't quite get it right. So I was getting a little bit frustrated with them, so I ended up just sort of plunking one of these bigger ones in there, and I think that ends up looking quite good. I actually, go back and add one of those into the uh, into the fountain in the middle of the water there as well. Uh, a little few rocks here as well. It's just kind of filling in gaps now, really. The, you know, in theme parks, I always find that when you see little gaps like this, it really takes away from the from the sort of theming and the uh, and the ambience and everything so I really try and make sure that all these little tiny gaps are filled in even if it's just a couple of bricks there a couple of logs or a couple of rocks it really does make the difference I think so uh, we look here at adding some lanterns in and again we just sort of go across and hang them from the beams just gives a nice uh, nice glow all the way down the queue one thing we also do back go back later is add some um, some litter bins as well through the clip queue because a lot of people take their rubbish onto the ride with them and then come out of the ride with them uh, afterwards so that's something we add on once we open a few shops which is what we're going to do with our general store in just a minute so a couple of thoughts about planet coast then in general as we're moving into the uh, full release now this was recorded in full release and uh, so we were, we're uh, all the beta content that i recorded is out now um, although there was a bit of a backlog, but now it's all out, so we're, we're in live release now. And overall, I'm still really happy with it. There was still quite a few sort of quality of life changes I would like to see, uh, just little things really that just need addressing. I think uh, some of the um, uh, the difficulty level I think could probably be tweaked up a little bit more difficult uh, in the scenarios and campaign modes, and uh, just some of the management features I think could do with being a bit more fleshed out. Uh, I actually think the opposite for sandbox mode, which we're in now. I think really a lot of the management features here should be cut. Uh, as far as I can see, sandbox mode, for me at least, should be uh, purely playing it for the fun of building and making rides. And although you have limited money, unlimited money, um, that's really the only thing that makes it sandbox. Money still applies here uh, in the fact that the, uh, the, the, the guests still have money and they will still only pay certain amounts for things. And, uh, and the staff still need paying and levelling up and uh, training even and, uh, and stores need people to be using them else the staff get unhappy and all things like this really I don't think should be in a sandbox mode uh, I think all staff should be instantly uh, sort of level 5 training and all stores should be happy to sit there whether they're being used or not and people shouldn't even have money on them it should be a case if they can do whatever they want to they can go on anything they can eat anything and that really that's how a sandbox mode for me should work and then all those features such as uh, money and um, uh, and guest happiness and everything should could, should come into play in the campaign or the scenario modes and um, so it's uh, it's a little little irritating that in a sandbox mode like this I still have to make sure that I've not priced the ride too high and really part of me wishes that we had have started this in a campaign mode now because I reckon with an easy campaign mode uh, building a few rides loads of research let it run for a week or two um, we would have had everything open and we could have built this and uh, and see how the uh, how the actual money sort of affects things so um, you know there's one thing I'll probably say with sandbox mode it really should be bare bones literally just making stuff and the peeps just happy to do and go on whatever they want so I was going to box in the end of the queue there I've decided not to um, because I think what we'll do is actually tie in the mine train coaster that we're going to be building soon into that little part of the queue it's obviously going to go through the cave uh, the mine cave at the top of the rapids there but I thought also it could come whizzing past that bit of queue there because I struggled to think of something to put there and I thought actually that would probably work quite well uh, we add a little bit of more supports to this uh, wall here and I, I have a go at one of these sort of uh, dropping brick things, dusty drops and uh, it works out quite well. So here we go, we're starting off with our general store. Uh, this will eventually be a sort of 
uh, Western Main Street almost with a few flat rides and a few stores uh, but I noticed people were really getting very thirsty especially not so much hungry but very thirsty so we build here a, uh, a Mexalente which is tacos I kind of felt that probably fit best with the Western theme uh, so the Tex-Mex and all that and then there's a, a gulpy slush and a yeah, hats fantastic Oh, that's another thing I'd like to see in Hats Fantastic. It's only a little thing, but in Hats Fantastic, I'd like to be able to select which hats people can buy from certain stores. So for this one, for instance, I'd like them only to be able to buy the cowboy hats. Um, and then, obviously, when we build a sci-fi area later on, I'd like them only to be able to buy the helmets over there. And uh, whilst that would be slightly more realistic, I think also it would give you a really good sort of uh, visual indication of where people are heading in the park. One thing I like that like that this game does is gives you a lot of visual indications. A lot of time you don't have to look at sort of menus and lists and numbers to find out what people are thinking. If people are looking for stuff and they can't find things they're looking for, they sort of crane their necks up and look around and if they need the bathroom they hold their groins and um, and there's obviously if there's litter around you can see the litter, if there's congestion you can see the people crowding up and one of the things I really love is the fact that a lot of the information you can get from the game is very visual and I think little things like that uh, being able to make it so they can only buy uh, themed hats in the area they're in would give you a really nice visual as to where people are heading in the park. If there was loads of people with cowboy hats and nobody wearing a, a crown, you would know that the fairy tale uh, area isn't quite as popular. And uh, just the little things like that, I think, would uh, would really just sort of tip this game over into the next level. I'm, I'm absolutely loving it so far. I think it's fantastic. Probably my favourite game of the year. But uh, little little things like that, I think, would really really enhance it quite a lot. So uh, yeah, we build a general store. We actually use that blue sign here. I think it looks quite smart. It looks quite nice and bright, and uh, a little bit of light scenery there. And uh, we build a little outhouse off this building as well. And uh, we actually get rid of that eventually, but I don't think it's on footage. And um, once this building was finished and everyone was filling themselves up with gulpy slushies, uh, I started getting messages that everyone really needed the bathroom. And it wasn't something I was really bothered about doing. Like I say, this isn't. I, I necessarily don't want this to be a really effective park. I want it to be an attractive park with cool rides. So things like bathrooms and stuff, I was like, okay, I'll get back to building them when I want to make a cool looking bathroom. But I didn't want to just chuck them down because people needed them. But I was getting so fed up with the notifications constantly blaring that people needed the bathroom and at building a small bathroom next to this uh, off camera so we actually get rid of that outhouse but then we duplicate this building over to the other side and edit it slightly um, so it uh, looks slightly differently but we keep the outhouse on there anyway you'll see this at the start of the next video uh, one of the things I asked in the last videos uh, in the let's play series is what people would like to see me do next because I finished the monolith scenario uh, which was the difficult scenario in the beta and I wanted to know whether people would rather see uh, more scenarios or a campaign mode or career mode or whatever I forget what it's called the, you know the, the sandbox with money basically and uh, most people would, would rather see scenarios and I, I thinking about it I kind of agree I think um, like I say because all the features with this one still apply apart from the actual money you've got to build um, you know we'd still need to make this a successful park and that's basically what you can do in uh, in career mode so I think we'll play scenarios because the sort of uh, focused achievements in that will make a nice change to the sort of open-endedness of uh, of this so um, yeah we're just finishing off with the last few touches now a few windows we don't do anything to the back of that I've still got to decide whether or not it needs something doing to it because you can see it from the rapids so it's still gonna have to be designed a little bit uh, as opposed to just sort of putting a white building on the back like I've done with the uh, the back of the water section of the rapids, the, the shooting the water section of the rapids. So again, all these little gaps, I think they just need filling in with a few bits of scenery. So here we place a wagon and uh, and then we end up sort of filling in this, uh, this area with rocks so you can't see the edge of the rapids. The other side of the rapids you can see, I wasn't too worried about that so much to be honest because in real life that would be where excess water flows over into the pond so that most likely would be free. But these areas here, these are the sort of areas that really set a, a pro theme park uh, apart from uh, sort of, you know, sort of state parks and, and things like that. These little bits of theming that just sort of really add to the uh, to the final theme. I say theme a lot, sorry. <laughs> so we finish that off with a few Crusoe bushes and um, and it looks pretty good. So we'll do a few sort of glamour shots of the actual general store building there because that's what I named this video because that's really the main thing we built. Uh, but also we're going to have a, uh, a complete POV ride of the rapids as well. Uh, placing some bins down here because the litter's starting to get a little bit on top of us uh, from the shops there. 
So, um, yeah, so we actually have a full POV of the Rapids ride. So you get to see that because it's, it wasn't quite finished in the last one. In between videos, I've also done a little bit more with them. Uh, just a few, basically bushes in gaps and things like that. Just to sort of, like here, um, basically I've done a lot more of this off camera. Just to kind of fill in these last areas. Anyway, I'm loving this series and I'm really glad that you guys are as well. And like I say, again, welcome to all the uh, all the new guys. Really, really happy to have you here and uh, looking forward to, uh, to more content. I toy with the idea of doing an animatronic scene here, but for some reason it doesn't quite fit right. I think I want to save the animatronics maybe for a slow ride or, or, or some or maybe just sort of some scenes around the town and instead concentrate on the water theme here with a few more sort of water spouts uh, hidden inside the rocks. Like, uh, like that. Right, that's pretty much all I've got to say to be honest. So we'll cut now to some of the uh, the glamour shots of the general, the general store and the last little bit of theming we did and then we'll do a full ride through of the uh, of the rapids with the uh, with the audio on so you can hear the different sound areas that we made and um, and that'll be it so thanks very much for watching uh, if you liked it please give us a like and uh, please subscribe if you're not already for more fantastic content from planet coaster thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one <laughs>